Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Taiwan Post New Wave Cinema Series. I'm Bi Yu Zhang, uh, the Deputy Director of the Center of Taiwan Studies. This year marks the center's 20th anniversary. We are very excited to launch this series to celebrate the center's dedication to Taiwan Studies, bringing Taiwan to the UK and Europe. The Taiwan Post New Wave Cinema Series aims to investigate Taiwan's cinematic uh, landscape uh, of the past 30 years. It is really our pleasure to welcome Dr. Lin Tingying today, one of our center's regular contributors. Dr. Lin is multi-talented. She's an academic, but also she's an artist. She received her PhD in media and communications from Goldsmiths University of London last year. She is also an independent visual artist and was trained in photography at Central St. Martins, University of the Arts, London. She is now an associate professor in the Department of in Information and Communication uh, uh, Department uh, at uh, Danjiang University. Her research focuses on contemporary Taiwan cinema, Hong Kong cinema, East Asian uh, screen media, and visual cultures. Since her graduation, she's quite productive. She has already contributed several chapters in uh, academic books, uh, including uh, two new books uh, published this year, Concentric, Literary and Cultural Studies, that's one. Another is Sport, Film and National Culture both published by uh, Rowlich this year. And the other one is uh, in positioning Taiwan in a global context, being and becoming. That's last year by Rowlich as well. Before we formally start the talk, I would like to thank our funder and collaborators, the Ministry of Culture Taiwan, the Cultural Division at the TRO, Taipei a Representative Office in the UK, and also the Taiwan Film Institute for their support. Without their generous funding and continuous uh, backing, it would not have been possible to launch such an ambitious uh, project. So please be aware before we start a, a, a formally start the session, this is a recorded, and I would appreciate that you turn off your audio and video functions during the talk to enhance the quality of the session. You're also welcome to post your questions in the chat uh, column, but I, I presume you should uh, start uh, posting your chat, uh, um, question probably 20 minutes into the talk. The, you know uh, the chat column is actually on the top. There will be a, 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 a squarey icon you can uh, post your chat. Could you make sure that you post only one at a time and keep them succinct. Our assistant curator, Xiao Yi, will collate them and uh, present them to the speaker. So may I just ask you to temporarily switch on your uh, microphone and put your hands together to welcome Dr. Lin Tingying. Welcome, Ting. Yeah, good afternoon everyone in the UK and good evening everyone in maybe Taipei. I saw some friends from Tokyo as well and Hong Kong as well. And yeah, um, I'm Ting Yin Lim and I'm so glad to be here. And um, I'm from the Department of Information and Communication at Danjiang, Tankang University, Taiwan. And first of all, um, I would like to say thank you to SOAS Center of Taiwan Studies for inviting me back to the um, Taiwan Post New Wave Cinema series, uh, which I'm also very excited about. And yeah, so I'm going to show show you my um, slides firstly. Okay, so um, the title of my talk today is New Authors in Taiwan Post New Wave Cinema. And in the following sections, I'm going to focus on the three directors from Taiwan's new generation filmmakers and to examine their individual styles, filmic themes, 
and filmmaking trajectories. While trying to position the significance of these three new authors in the Taiwan new post new wave cinema. Okay, so um, at the very beginning, I'd like to raise the question to initiate this talk. Why do we need to locate new authors in the Taiwan post new wave cinema? By answering this question, I would also like to explain the aim of this talk and also the rationale of the research. Um, since we all know that Taiwan cinema has long been renowned for its new wave, the so-called Taiwan new cinema in the 1980s, and also the Jean, second wave. I'm oh, sorry. Jean, hey, may hey. I stop you? you okay. Your uh, shared uh, slide has disappeared. Oh, really? OK, so. So now you don't you cannot see my slides now. Oh, no. oh, OK, so maybe once again. So can you see? Yes. OK, okay. See great. Thank okay. you. Great. Sorry, I um, think the, the environment. There might be some problem. <laughs> yes. OK, so how you can see the page. OK, the slides or the authorship paradigm here. Great. So, um, and also the second wave in the 1990s, which have uh, marked the rise of authorship paradigm, focusing on the art house authors, such as, oh, we know that Ho Xiaoxian, Edward Yang, Yang De Chang, An Li, and Cai Ming Liang. And um, famed scholars, Emily Ye Yu and Daryl William Davis, pointed out that it is the focus on author authorship that Taiwan cinema has been positioned in the world cinema studies and gained enormous popularity in global film circuits. Quote, we argue that precisely because of authorship, Taiwan cinema remains alive and energetic, especially in the context of world cinema, constituting an alternative form of popularity as seen in various international circuits. End. On the other hand, um, as uh, Professor uh, Song Hui Lim also points out, these Taiwan new cinema directors and their works can be seen as a form of soap power that has built up Taiwan's cultural and diplomatic images in the global realm. So from these points of the above mentioned film scholars, we can see that the authorship and author studies have played a very uh, significant role for Taiwan cinema. However, it should be noted that Taiwan cinema in the 1990s and early 2000s has encountered a downturn in the box office. Until 2008, it is a crucial year of the release of Wei Doshin's pioneering film, Cake Number no. 7, Hai Jiao Xi Hao. This film has triggered the revival of Taiwan cinema with its enormous box office success and aroused huge popularity among the local audience, while also marking the coming of the new age of contemporary Taiwan cinema. And the new period of Taiwan cinema is generally called the Taiwan New Web Cinema, Taiwan Hong Kong Chao Ding. It's commonly considered to have started in 2008 with Wei Dou number seven, and Xi Hao, and kept on with other subsequent popular films such as Lin Shu Yu's Winds of September, Zhejiang Feng, which I will talk about later, as well as Yang Yazhe's ORZ Boys, Zhong Nan Hai. Following the commercial success of these popular films made by the new generation Taiwanese filmmakers in 2008, the era of the Taiwan post new wave cinema has arrived. And it should be noted that the advent of the post new wave has also led to the continuation of authorship studies or author studies, 
a lot of scholarly literature focuses on Hou Xiaoxian and Cai Mingliang's work in recent years. For example, um, many scholarly literature focuses on Hou Xiaoxian's assassin, Sikhe Nianyang, and Cai Mingliang's stray dog, Zhao Yu, and maybe his latest, uh, um, Your Face, in 2008, uh, as well as other uh, short films and artworks, and maybe also subsequently on um, his latest film, uh, Days, Ritzi. Uh, of this year. However, considering the non-Taiwan new cinema directors other than Hou Xiaoxian and Cai Mingliang in contemporary Taiwan cinema, only Wei De Shen and Mi Ji Zi, uh, you can see from uh, the left one, Zhao De Ying, have rather received attention in the international scholarly literature and global film festivals so far. Um, to be specific, for example, um, the scholarly collection Taiwan Cinema International Reception and Social Change, edited by uh, Professor Cho Gui Fen and Minye Rosley and Gary Rosley, is a great example for the Taiwan post New Web Cinema and Wei De Shen studies. There have been some other academic publications as well on the Taiwan post New Web Cinema and Wei De Shen. On the other hand, we can see uh, many international scholarly works and global film studies, uh, uh, film festivals have started to pay attention to Midi Z, Zhao De Ying, an art house Burmese Taiwanese director who centers on his experiences of diaspora and migration in his works. And there have been some um, researches and journal articles on Midi Z's works that have come out as you can see on the slides. For example, like um, um, Professor Ling Songhui's authors, uh, Pure Cinema, Ubiquitous Trafficking and Poverty as Problematic in Many of These Films, uh, which is included in Transnational Cinemas. And also um, Melissa Melling Chan's uh, Male Older Brides and Method and Fantamins, a uh, signed form Burmiseness in Many of These Burma Trilogy included in concentric literary and cultural studies. And also Luke Robinson's MIDI-Z network aesthetics from below and the cultural politics of Taiwanese sub-imperialism, um, which is included in screen. But so far, we can only see um, Wei De Shen and MIDI-Z have rather received the international attention, either in the um, um, scholarly works or in the um, film festivals. In order to build up the entire picture of the development of the contemporary Taiwan cinema, we still need to explore more authors in the post new wave. And therefore, considering this research gap, this talk aims to investigate those under examined new authors in the Taiwan post new wave cinema, while particularly focusing on three directors from the new generation Taiwanese filmmakers, which are Hou Jiran, Ling Shuyu, and Zheng Youjie. Okay, so um, in the following sections, firstly, I'm going to focus on these three new authors, early engagement, common engagement in youth romance genre in Taiwan post new wave cinema. And furthermore, I'm going to compare and contrast their individual styles on um, their filmic language they use, and there are uh, the cinematic aesthetics. In the second part of the talk, I'm going to examine their filmic themes and filmmaking trajectories, while also investigating the differences in their individual characteristics and significances in fiction and non-fiction filmmaking. Also the social political concerns and on uh, international co-productions, respectively. Okay, so the, finally, the concluding remarks part. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to uh, move to the part one, their early common engagement in youth romance genre, differing filmic styles and cinematic aesthetics. So uh, Hou, uh, Hou, Hou Jiran, sorry, Hou Jiran, Lin Shuyu, and Zheng Youjie have presented their first short film 
around the millennium. And they made their feature length debut, all their uh, second feature length films around 2008. To be specific, as you can see here, Lin Shuyu's first feature film, Winds of September, Zhu Jiangfeng, was released in 2008. And Zheng Youjie's second film, Yang Yang, was released in 2009. And Hou Jiran's debut, One Day, You Yi Tian, was released in 2010. In, in other words, we can see that the time of their debut or their second feature film of these three directors approximately corresponds to the year of the rise of the Taiwan post-New Web cinema. And furthermore, the other aspect I would like to point out is um, genre. It is crucial to note that Taiwan post-New Wave cinema has opened up a new path of genre cinema and commercial films in Taiwan. And there is a clear trend of genre-driven and commercial-oriented film production and consumption in the post-2008 Taiwan cinema, which can be broken down into the following categories, as you can see on the slides. For example, uh, such as like a, a local comedies, history films and epics, romance and teen romance, child and cop films, heroes and thrillers, and so on. And among these genres, uh, the one I would like to focus on is the youth romance genre or the teen romance genre. And um, according to uh, Ruzhou Laoshi, Taiwanese film scholar uh, Ruzhou Robert Chen, apart from the uh, previous films of Taiwan new cinema that address national and historical trauma in the Taiwan new cinema director's works, such as Hou Xiaoxian's A City of Sadness, Beijing Chen Shi, or Edward Young's A Brighter Summer Day, Guling Jie Shao Nian Sha Ren Shi Jian. There is another side to approach Taiwan cinema as a cinema working out of sadness. That is a genre of youth romance films. For instance, Yi Zhi Yan's Blue Gate Crossing, Lan Sou Da Men, can be seen as the forerunner of this genre in Taiwan cinema of the 21st century. Okay. And later on, as mentioned in the, the above, Lin Shuyu's first feature film, Winds of September, was released in 2008, and Zheng Youjie's second film, Yang Yang, was released in 2009, and Hou Jiran's debut, One Day, was released in 2010. And these three films can be generally categorized as youth romance genre films. And these three films have been exactly released in between the success of Cape Number no. 7 in 2008. And also the subsequent box office hit, Giden's quote, Zhou Ba Dao's You Are the Apple of my eye, 那些年我们一起追的女孩, in 2011, which can be seen as another representative example for the youth romance genre in the Taiwan post New Web cinema. And we can say that the youth romance genre can be seen as one of the significant genres and even uh, a trend that has been very popular and predominant during the first few years of the Taiwan new a post new wave. Okay. And it is interesting to see that there is a certain kind of similarity of these three directors due to their early common engagement in the youth romance genre. Um, that is to say, when it comes to the themes in their early works, Lin Shuyu's Winds of September is about the friendship and the love among a group of love school, uh, high school students. And Zheng Youjie's Yang Yang is about a girl who is French Taiwanese mixed and her story about love and self-identity. And Hou Jiran's One Day is about love, dream, and fate of a young couple. As mentioned uh, in the above, all of these three films can be generally categorized under the youth romance genre. On the, on the one hand. Um, on the other hand, despite their early common engagement in such kind of the youth romance genre, 
we can still see their differing cinematic styles and aesthetics in these three works. So in the following section, I'm going to use these three films as case studies and to compare and contrast the differing cinematic styles and aesthetics of these three Taiwanese directors. Okay. So uh, firstly, Winds of September, Zhou Jiang Feng, can be seen as a coming of age film telling a story about a group of high school students in Xinzhu in the 1990s Taiwan. It also portrays their friendship and passion in baseball games, as well as their conflicts and this illusion of what the future holds, alongside their growth and maturity. In this film, we can see director Lin Shuyu employs a kind of universal film language with solid narrative structure, as well as the dramatic elements to illustrate the conflicts between the characters. So in the following clip, uh, we can see the dramatic moment in the conflicts between the characters. So from this clip, we can see uh, director Lin Shu Yu is very good at using such kind of dramatic elements to create a kind of tension in the story. And he also creates a very obvious plot line and solid narrative structure. We can also see a very clear three act structure in Winds of September. That is the setup, confrontation and resolution. And we will talk a bit about uh, Lin Shu Yu's universal cinematic style and film language later. And on the other hand, Zheng Youjie's Yang Yang can be seen as a female coming of age story that focuses on the French Taiwanese mixed Yang Yang. Um, the following clip is the very last shot of this film, which is depicting a sequence uh, in which uh, the protagonist is constantly running. And this long shot captures her perseverance and insistence of being a runner. And this sequence can also symbolize the process of her self-recognition and self-identification. So um, let's see this clip in Yang Yang, um, which is about a bit long, about three minutes long, but this is a one shot, so which is a, I think, another amazing shot in Yang Yang. It should be noted that as for cinematography, director Zhen Youjie chose to use a handheld camera to shoot the sequence. And he's very good at using handheld camera to create a very close but very flexible distance between the camera and the characters. And this can be seen as his signature style of close humanistic observation. He continues to use the handheld camera in his latest work, Dear Tenant, Qing de Fang Ke, of this year. And this has also successfully created a kind of close but gently humanistic observation. In contrast, Ho Jiran's One Day, Yu Yitian, is the most uh, stylistic one among these three youth romance films. As we talked about last week in the Q&A session with director Ho, the surreal elements are very unique and the visual style is very poetic in One Day, uh, which can be compared to other uh, contemporary films from the Taiwan post-New Wave cinema. In the following clip, we can see um, the very poetic and unique visual style of director Ho Ji Ran, and also how he created such a dream world and the surrealistic elements in this film. So I'm going to show you the first clip um, in one day. So the first clip is about a dream in which the protagonist meets an Indian guy on the vessel. We can see the cinematography is very unique here, and the camera movement is smoothly flowing, just like the character's flows of consciousness in the dream world. Now I'm going to show you the second one, second clip in one day. So the second clip in one day is located nearly on um, the ending of the film, 
which shows the tragedy and the fate between this young couple. As mentioned by the director Ho Jiran himself last week, he particularly used a shallow focus shot to create such kind of uncertainty in the film. And this can also refer to the segmented memories of the characters in the dream. It should be noted that it is his such kind of the uh, surrealistic, poetic, and beautiful visual style that made him as a unique author in the Taiwan Post New Web Cinema. Okay, so now I'm going to move to the part two. I'm going to talk about their the differences in filmmaking trajectories and their individual significance to Taiwan Post New Web Cinema, which are uh, fiction and nonfiction filmmaking socio-political concerns and international co-productions. Firstly, I would like to start from director Ho Jiran. We know that Ho is a talented multidisciplinary director who has been focusing on both fiction and non-fiction filmmaking. As for his fiction filmmaking, he has created surrealistic cinematic worlds such as One Day, You Tian, as we just saw um, in the clips. And also his second feature length film, When the Wolf Falls in Love with a Sheep, Nan Fang Xiaoyang Mu Chang. And this one is also with very unique and dreamlike visual styles, which can be seen as his personal sig signature cin cinematic style that made him as an author in Taiwan cinema. Considering his nonfiction uh, filmmaking, he has examined and covered various important issues in Taiwan's post-war cultural histories via his documentaries. For example, his documentary, Taiwan Black Movies, Taiwan Hei Dian Ying, in 2005, exposed the social realist crime films in the early 1980s. And this documentary is still very important to Taiwan cinema studies. His next documentary, Old to Time, Si Shi Nian, examines the Taiwanese campus folk songs movement, Mingo Yun Dong, led by a group of local singers in the 1970s, which also explores the complex identity politics and the relations between Taiwan and China. His later documentary, Panana, explores the life story of Gao Zhuhua, the daughter of Gao Yisheng, a political prisoner during the period of white terror, and her life as a legendary singer in the paying club. Via his non-fiction filmmaking, we can see director Ho Jiran has visually rewritten alternative Taiwan cultural histories from various angles, which is equally important to Taiwan cinema as his works of fiction filmmaking. Secondly, I would like to talk about Zheng Youjie. Um, when I uh, when we we are looking at his filmmaking trajectories, we can see that he has examined and reflected on various significant social issues in his works. For example, um, his My Little Honeymoon, Ye Liangshang, focuses on the migrant bride issue, and Wa Wa No Si Dao, Taiyang the Haizi, on the rights to the indigenous group, and his television series. Days we start start uh, start at the sun. on the political and social movements. And his latest work, Dear Tenant, Qing Ai De Fang Ke, on the issue of same sex ma same sex marriage and the LGBTQ rights. It should be noted that director Zheng Youjie constantly employs cinema as a medium to reflect on ta contemporary Taiwanese society and also to make the audience pay attention to these various social issues by his very touching narratives and humanistic observation. And it is his socio-political concerns that made him as an author in the Taiwan post-New Web Cinema. Finally, I would like to talk about Lin Shuyu. He has a very unique background with Western film school training. He received his film MFA from California Institute of the Arts. 
this background can be linked to his filmic style that can cross the national and cultural boundaries. And this can correspond to his later works in transnational filmmaking. After his award-winning short film debut, The Pan of Artists, Haishun Jianbin, he successfully created his alter styles with his universal film language in his subsequent feature films, such as Winds of September, Zhou Jiangfeng, Starry Starry Nights, Xing Kong, and Senior Flower, Bai Ri Gao Bie, and also his latest international co-produced film, The Garden of Evening Mists, Xi Wu Hua Yuan of last year. Starry Starry Nights, Xing Kong, is his first attempt in international co-production with the Chinese funding company and talents. In his latest film, The Garden of Evening Mists, which was nominated as one of the best films in the Golden Horse Film Award last year, he has participated in a global co-produced project. To be specific, this film is produced by HBO Asia and a Malaysian production company, Astro Show. Lin Shuyu also worked with an international team composed of Malaysian, Japanese, Taiwanese, British, and Singaporean talents in the production, production process of the Garden of Evening Mists, um, such as the famous uh, Japanese actor Hiroshi Abe and Malaysian actress Li Xinjie. It should be noted that um, Lin Shuyu's latest film, The Garden of Evening Mists, has opened up a, huge, a whole, whole new chapter for Taiwan cinema for three layers of reasons. Firstly, we're happy to see such an auteur from the new generation of Taiwanese directors who has established his filmic style and has been vigorously engaged in transnational filmmaking. And hopefully his experience uh, in transnational filmmaking can bring about more um, possibilities for Taiwan cinema now. Secondly, collaborating with the global production companies and streaming media platforms such as HBO Asia or, or Netflix, uh, for example, can effectively enhance the visibility of Taiwan's filmic and television productions. And this is a, the um, another whole new chapter uh, of international co-production and global distribution for Taiwan cinema. And finally, considering the language, multiple languages such as English, Japanese, and Malaysian languages are used in the Garden of Evening Mists. And this is a good opportunity for us to reconsider Taiwan cinema. Should Taiwan cinema be necessarily situated under the Chinese language cinema, Hua Yu Dian framework, or Sinophone cinema, Hua Yu Yu Xi Dian framework? This question could be opened here, and there might be some debates in the field, I think. And at least my, from my observation, these are the three aspects that Lin Shu Yu's latest work has brought to Taiwan cinema now which are on the transnational filmmaking experiences, global uh, co-production and distribution, and also the reconsideration on the Chinese language cinema framework and the Sinophone cinema framework. Okay. So, concluding remarks. Okay. To conclude, um, th these three directors have marked three different routes in the Taiwan Post New Wave Cinema, that is, Ho Jiran with his poetic cinematic style in fiction filmmaking and his achievement in rewriting Taiwan's cultural histories by his nonfiction filmmaking. Shen Youjie with his humanistic observation and his sociopolitical concerns on contemporary Taiwanese society and identities. And Lin Shuyu with his universal film language and his brilliant experiences in transnational filmmaking. And finally, this research aims to provide an initial discussion on these three new authors, while hoping to open up more dynamic dialogues in between Taiwan's vigorous film cultures and contemporary Taiwanese society, and further to raise 
the international visibility of the new authors in the Taiwan Post New Wave Cinema. Furthermore, there are some more directors that we can focus on in the future, okay, such as Zhou Monghong, Yang Yazhe, Xiao Yaquan, as well as female directors such as Zero Zhou, Zhou Meiling, and Xin Chen, Chen Xinyi, and others. In the end, this research also helps to build up a new discourse for the research on the Taiwan Post New Web Cinema and the new authors, while also hoping to see how the works of these new authors could work as a new form or a new force of Taiwan's soap power, either by international film festivals or global streaming platforms, which can shape a whole new national brand for Taiwan in the field of cultural diplomacy and also world cinema studies. Okay, so yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tiffany. It's so comprehensive. That, uh, I'm really grateful being so accommodating when we uh, talk about this uh, particular project. Um, uh, Tiffany is so uh, amazing, just conjure up something really comprehensive. It's really um, great to start off this particular series. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> uh, be, before I open the floor, of course, um, I have to say um, uh, I got the pr privilege to ask the first questions, of course, as usual. So um, I actually prepared some questions then, then because you all answered them. So I have to make, <laughs> I have to come up some new ones. So I, I would like to uh, ask you because you mentioned about um, Cape number seven as a turning point. And then uh, you also mentioned about uh, Cape number seven really what act as the turning point overturning the uh, once lousy box office uh, returns for so-called Taiwan, Taiwanese films. So did you do you suggest that the new generation directors actually have uh, enjoyed a much better box office return and success and the support of all the audience uh, as a general uh, phenomena because it's very different from the uh, so-called new wave uh, they were actually uh, criticized as being uh, uh, difficult to understand uh, all that business and the second question uh, really is about I'm asking your uh, opinion based on your research on contemporary Taiwanese uh, cinema as well as the East Asian uh, uh, visual arts. Can you see any similarity uh, in uh, Hong Kong uh, cinema or in East Asia cinema? Because this kind of very different way of presenting the new generation of uh, uh, young people in, in, in East Asia. Two questions. Thank you. Okay. Hold on, let me spotlight you. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thank you, B, for the, first, uh, the first two questions. Oh, oh, oh. Director Ho. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <laughs> so maybe the first question could be answered by Director Ho as well, because uh, he himself is in the industry. OK. Yes. So well, maybe you should go first. <laughs> okay, OK, I go first. OK. Uh, I think yes, because uh, we can see um, there are yeah. several um, blockbusters happen uh, after 2008, but I'm sure that maybe um, Director Ho has a uh, kind of the um, in industry point of view can tell us some more stories about that. But um, I have to uh, add one thing because because of this year is a kind of the um, uh, year uh, influenced by COVID-19 and the uh, the Hollywood. Uh, Blockbusters cannot uh, produce that much. So, um, so Taiwan cinema this year could be a um, better year than other years because uh, the the local audience could, could choose could choose Taiwan um, local produced film rather than other like American blockbusters or some, something. So so far we can see the performance of the box office of uh, Guo Pian. Um, um, local produced films now is quite good so far. Yeah. And um, 
the second thing I think is um, the similarity. I think that that could be linked to the um because um because in in Taiwan our industry is still quite small, but I think our government they take some they try to learn the lesson from um for example South Korea because South Korea they built a really solid um, national cinema brand and even are uh, distributed and very popular around the globe. So I think um, our government, they're trying very hard to make some kind of the, uh, like they establish one so uh, the kind of the um, government uh, institution to um, broaden the market of Taiwanese film and television productions in the global realm and to let Taiwan's like a, uh, the enhance try to enhance the visibility of Taiwan films, like a, the really predominant South Korean films in the global cinema. So I think um, we're still growing, mm. although it's a bit a bit far, but we're still yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, pay the effort now. So so maybe uh, Director Ho, would you like to answer a bit your insights from the industry? Do you think at the time in the post 2000 wave, it would be better than the previous time? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> and, and, and just, and just to be audience <laughs> here. <laughs> And uh, I, I, uh, as a, your question, I, I think the uh, the 2000 wave um, it, it's just a process of that of uh, that particular time, and uh, I, I think uh, the uh, filmmaker and the, the society environment uh, just uh, reflect reflect the the. Uh, Taiwan people's mind in, in that very particular time. So I, I don't, I, I won't say it will be the better or worse or something, but it just for that particular time. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So maybe we can ask uh, Shao Yi to come in uh, to raised some questions, Xiao Yi. Um, yeah, I think, um, so the next question is from David. So maybe I'll just, um, if he doesn't mind, I'll just um, ask this question on his behalf. Um, so David is asking if Ting Ying could comment on how um, supportive the government um, is towards this new generation of filmmakers. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Again, because um, my, my view would be not really, you know, really comprehensive enough. So maybe if Director Ho, you want to say something, please <laughs> wake up to add some more points. Uh, I've heard that some, um, um, some filmmakers in the industry, they say that the, the government does not really, uh, that they are not really supportive, even though they have different policies and different, you know, like also on. Because Taiwan, um, the, the industry of Taiwan cinema or the, the audience of, uh, of the local cinema, they still tend to be, you know, attracted by the, the American films or maybe Right now, Japanese films, uh, uh, anime, uh, animation film now. Maybe you know the Gui Mie Zhi Ren or something. Um, so Taiwan, Taiwan's local film is uh, confronting lots of competitors right now. So I think the government should set some more solid policies, maybe like a, a in 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 South Korea from South Korea's. Uh, experiences like a Gupian pay or do something like that. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's quite kind of a there are some debates in the field and you can you can see um there are different camps. They they say um 
the government should protect the local produce firm more. But the other can say that um, we should let the audience choose what they want. So that's the, the current debate between the um, the ratio of the local firms in the, the theaters now. So I think there are still some more problems or something that we can improve <laughs> as for, for the policies of the government to support the, the filmmakers. Okay, so maybe, maybe if uh, Director Ho, you want to say something about the policies, things or something, you can add. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think in Taiwan's situation, because the Taiwan uh, was uh, entered the WTO mm -hmm. in the early 90s, and uh, at that time, uh, Taiwan, Taiwan government already give up the film, local film uh, put, put, protected protection in that in that very early time in the very beginning in the WTO time so I think it, it already set up a very clear and a firm uh, stru structure of Taiwan's uh, film uh, film industry so uh, after that Taiwan government uh, tried to uh, provide financial support to the local uh, film making, but the uh, whole market is already uh, already wide open for all whole country, especially um, Hollywood film is is already here and that no limited with with no limited. So, so I think um, so that maybe is this the the structure uh, structure is already set set up. So I think uh, if so, I think uh, now uh, in the in the two thousand uh, or the late nineteen nineties, the the Taiwan film industry is very weak. And I think for the the time now or after uh, 2010, I think it, it, it is because the, uh, there are um, still certain need uh, in the Taiwan audience to they want to see their own language film. So that that and the, the this kind of Taiwan film is uh, talk about the uh, uh, Taiwan Taiwan identity, especially like the two thousand. I think two thousand seven Lian Xi Chu, and then the uh, Hai Jiao Qi Hao Cap Number Seven, and uh, all this film is about uh, Taiwan Taiwan land market. Uh, uh, Taiwan view or Taiwan people, Taiwan local story, and uh, that is not Hollywood film can say. Mm -hmm. So, so I think um, for now there are still some uh, Taiwan film industry can survive. That's because of this lo local need. <laughs> yeah. mm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Tingying, would you like to come back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Oh, okay. Sh Xiaoyi, would you like to follow up? Yeah, um, I'm just I'm just seeing if Tingying has anything to add um, to the question. Um, if not, um, I think the next question is from our audience, um, Kivan. Um, so uh, Kivan is asking, um, has there been any musicals in the recent past from Taiwan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is some musicals. Uh, uh, there, there were some musicals. For example, um, uh, Wei De Shen's, uh, after he finished his city ballet, his famous uh, ep epic film, and he was uh, doing a project called a... Uh, 
52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 52 hertz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. U
the movie, you know, the Art House uh, global streaming platform. They prefer really Art House things, like a, a really authentic, I, I'm not sure, but like they really like experimental or kind of the um, kind of the realism thing or kind of the, uh, they really love Taiwan new cinema, like a Ho Xiaoxian's Long Shot or something like that. And they prefer Mizi Z and, and they even really love Mizi Z a lot. And I think uh, in contrast with Wei De Shen, because Wei De Shen's uh, status in Taiwan cinema is, is like uh, we know he kind of the re rewrites the history, a colonial history by his uh, several films. So he's so important in Taiwan's um, uh, historiography things. So Wei De Shen's uh, popularity is not because of his, um, his, his aesthetics, but his significance in Taiwan's, um, I don't know, academia or, or cultural histories or something like that. So the scholars focuses on Wei De Shen because of his ambition, ambition to rewrite the history. Okay, so I think that's a very different thing. Uh, for uh, MIDI-Z and Wei De Shen. So, um, so you can see here, so because uh, the art house audience, they prefer the very art house directors like MIDI-Z and, and Wei De Shen is not, not on the art house platform. So you can see um, the global audience, they turn to um, a very, very, um, a very, uh, I don't know, specific form for the, the, the directors who attend to Cannes, Berlin film festivals or Venice film festivals or something like that. So I think that's the, um, the phenomenon right now. So maybe what we can do now is to try to promote or to raise the visibility of these um, unseen directors to the global audience. And maybe as a film scholars for me and I could I, could, I, I will try my best to write some more um, um, pieces of writing or articles on the unseen directors of the post new wave Taiwan cinema. And I think maybe, uh, I, think the, I think this project is particularly for to promote this uh, these group of yeah, unseen directors. So I think, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm still very, um, <laughs> uh, positive toward the future of Taiwan post New World Cinema. And I hope um, the, the global audience would see um, these group of very precious and yeah, and very good um, Taiwanese filmmakers. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, I think, um, so um, Jessica just now also commented on um, uh, uh, like a prominence of youth romance genre, which you've also talked about. Um, so I guess um, this is also my own question for you, if you don't mind. So um, why do you think um, all three uh, all three directors, or or I think um, not just these three directors, um, why do you think they um, they tend to focus on the youth romance genre as as okay. a <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, I think um, maybe maybe later on after my answer, maybe uh, Director Ho, you can answer your own version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that that is because because uh, I, I I quite agree with uh, uh, Wu Zhou Lao, the professor Wu Zhou Chen, his words on the, the a kind of cinema looking out of sadness in the twenty first century of Taiwan cinema. And at that time, um, after uh, the Lan Xiao Damen in 2002, we can see uh, lots of um, the films, like a uh, uh, director Ho just mentioned, Lian Xi Chu, is about uh, a young guy who cycles around Taiwan Island, something like that. And and I think the, the stories about the youth could catch the eyes of the local audience, as a, especially the group like a in their around their 20s, they would pay for the ticket and to go into the theater to watch a local film. So uh, um, I think after 2008, uh, they, they 
uh, the the filmmakers or the producers might might figure out that uh, the local um, audience like kind of the the scenario of a young um, teenagers love or uh, young people's love. So they um, they focus on that themes particularly. So you can see a there's a consecutive release like a 2008 Hai Jiao Qi and then uh, 2009. Uh, 2008, Hai Jiao Qi Hao and Zhou Zhang Feng, 2009, Yang Yang, and 2010, uh, Director Tien, and 2011, um, um, uh, You Are the Apple of My Eye, um, that is by Gideon's Co. And also in 2015, there's another blockbuster that talks, talks about the teen romance, which is called Our Times, or the Song Nu Shi Dai. And uh, I think there's still some differences between these these genre uh, films because you can see like a uh, director Ho and director Lin Shuyu and uh, Zheng Youjie. They have very personal uh, artistic styles, even though they are dealing with that uh, team romance genre. Yeah. But as for the other cases, like uh, uh, You Are the Apple of My Eye and the Our Times, you can see that's a really commercial oriented firms. So even though they are in the same category, there are still different rules among them. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you. So uh, our next question um, is from our audience um, Lai Yong. Um, in recent years, the Taiwan oh, so it's about youth romance films again. So in recent years, um, these films have gained popularity also in other regions such as Hong Kong. Um, um, it's probably part of the uh, Wenqing culture. So um, it's interesting that director Ho has made Taiwanese black movies. Um, is there a legacy or continuation of this crime genre and sensational aesthetics um, among the new wave auteurs after 2010? Go ahead, thank you. Okay, so I think there's a, um, the sequence would be a, di a bit different because uh, director Ho Jiyan, uh, Jiyan, <laughs> okay, director Ho uh, made uh, Taiwan Black movies, that documentary in 2005. So that's that happened between the rise of the post new wave be, uh, before before sorry before 2008. So after two, 2008, I think uh, I don't I don't think there is a direct. I'm I'm not sure I'm right, but please t please add some more points from your own points. Um, I don't think there is a direct link of the uh, social realist crime film in the 1980s to the uh, the the recent years of the crime genre, because I think the the recent years of crime genre would be influenced by the pan Asian uh, filmic productions like a uh, Japanese of South Korea or Hong Kong uh, contemporary crime films like a uh, you know um, Hong Kong directors like a. Uh, uh, Johnny To or maybe um, South Korea directors there like um, there are so many uh, directors that are focusing on the crime genre and I think the the young generation of Taiwanese filmmakers they are highly influenced by the uh, the popular culture transmitted in between uh, uh, East Asia so they uh, they are really uh, they like the, the Japanese uh, horrors and also the Hong Kong crime film, trial films and South Korea car films or something like that. So they, I think that that's the, the, the reason of their tendency to make kind of the crime or, or cop uh, or triad uh, genre after 2008 or after 2010. So I don't think there is a link between the social realism film of 1980s and the nowadays phenomenon of the crime films. Okay, so maybe others you do have different point of view you can just add, add in. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thank you. Um, so do you think, I think um, I'm just 
probably adding to um, uh, our audience's point about um, the rise of this kind of romance, youth romance films in, in, for example, Hong Kong. Um, do you also think? Do you think there's a correlation of influence between, between this this kind of trend? Okay, so to, to correlation between what and what? I'm oh, sorry. Um, sorry, I should make it clear. So, um, um, so I think uh, our audience mentioned that um, there's also a rise of this kind of youth romance films in Hong Kong. Okay. Um, so yeah, do you think do you think there's some kind of influence? Okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I thank you. I still remember that last last week when uh, director Ho talked about the element of Xiao Xing Xing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So last week uh, we talked about that things. So I think when we do have kind of the youth romance genre, which was started exactly from two thousand eight, uh, two thousand two, Lan Se and that kind of the uh, the trend of um, Xiao Qing Xing or Wen Xing kind of the um, distributed to uh, to Hong Kong and maybe other other areas or something. Yeah, so um, I think there should be some inference because, for example, because I, I I'm also doing kind of the contemporary Hong Kong cinema studies, and there is another um, there's a very latest film called. Huan Ai, I don't know if you are, you have heard about that Huan Ai, okay, that film, and you can see the uh, the visual styles or the cinematography or something, which is quite kind of the, I'm not sure if the director agreed it or not, but kind of the, uh, you can compare that with Taiwan's uh, youth romance films or Xiao Qing Xing films or something. Yeah, and also um, 哪一天我们会会飞, there's a, another film in contemporary Hong Kong cinema about kind of the, the youth romance things. So uh, I think it, it could be compared. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I don't I don't want to be uh, to say, oh, that work is definitely influenced by Taiwanese filmmakers or something. I'm not I, I don't want to say that, but you can see there's some similarity in the visual elements or the similarities in the, the 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 cinematography styles or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I think we have um one more question from um Kivan. Um, so do you th do you think it, it is common for um Taiwanese films to go in into partnership um with with Chinese company to make a movie? I suppose that means um um cross um so those kind of uh, collaboration films. Okay. Okay. So uh, actually, Taiwanese filmmakers have tried that model before, particularly in during, I think, 2011, 12, and 13. There are several um, um, films com coming out during that, that these years. For example, we see The Starry Starry Night, which is co-produced with a uh, Chinese production company. Uh, and also in 2012, we do have a, a film called Love, I, and that's a co-production film as well. And in 2000, 2013, um, if I, I remember it right, it's Jian Wang Tun by director Chen Yuxun, which is another co-produced film. But, after that trend, because I think that's a, a the trend of the I don't know collaborative economic network with Chinese uh, companies because of the 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 the, uh, the policy of the government of that time during you know the um, 2011 to 2014 or something like that, and at that time. Uh, you can see lots of Taiwan's filmmakers have involved into that model. But, however, <laughs> you can see the, the effect on some of the firms has very good box office results, like a uh, love in, in, in China or in Hong Kong and other places. But like a Jian Wang Chun, it doesn't make a very good, uh, good results either in Taiwan or in China. So, some critics might say that um, 
that's because Taiwanese directors do, does not really know what the Chinese market wants. So uh, they even think that the Taiwanese directors are more good at focusing on local stories. For example, Chen Yuxun's latest work, Xiao Shi de Qing Ren Jie. Some critics uh, say that it's much better than his previous Jian Wang Sun. So you can see uh, there's a uh, um, kind of the, these Taiwanese filmmakers have tried before, but uh, the result of uh, this is not really uh, good as they expected. Yeah. So that's the this situation right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Um, I guess um, the next question is actually my own question. Okay. <laughs> so um, I think, yeah, my question is also actually inspired by by one of the audience's question. Um, so I think after, um, actually this is um, one of the things we observed um, when we were working on this project. Um, I think there's probably a um, still a kind, of, I think, I'm not sure if this is a result of the Taiwan New Wave Cinema, but I think there's still a very strong sense of um, detachment or bifurcation between art house and commercial cinema. So people who, who are very altruistic or very, with a very strong personal style continue to embark on that um, path of being an auteur. But meanwhile, commercial cinema, of course, is also on the rise. Um, do you think that um, do you think that, that um, is the appropriate um, understanding of the situation now? Right. Yeah, I think I think you are right because um, uh, I think there are so so many different routes of the, the post new wave. So some. Filmmakers are engaged in into the very commercial oriented films, and some of them are trying to um, to go for uh, the international film festivals or uh, other um, other I, I don't know um, the the platform to make the global audience to see their works. And I think there is a trend of the artistic works from some young generation of di directors even much younger than uh, like uh, director Ho and Ling Zhu and Zhen Youjie. And they're around their thirties and even younger than me. And they have a really good artistic background. They have trained in French film school before, and they have a very good quality of um, short films so far. They don't have their feature length film, but they do have their short films work so far. And these short films has, um, have gained lots of uh, art house awards in the short film, film festivals. So I think that's a another route uh, of the young filmmakers are now doing. Um, and I'm, I'm personally very looking forward to their feature length film. I think they could create another art house scenario for uh, the new, the young generation of the Taiwanese authors in the future. Okay. Do you mean that um, this is also different from the old um, old trend of art house cinema? So or how, how are they different? Okay. Um, because uh, you can see there's a, a work um, called um, uh, this film has gained uh, the, 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 the biggest prize of the, from the Taipei Film Festival of last year, if I remember it right. Okay, so that director has been trained in, in France and his uh, technique is quite artistic and quite personal, and which is quite very, very different from the, the, the the generation of like a director Ho and Zhen uh, Youjie and Lin Shu Yi. So you can check it out and you can see that director, he combines a kind of the uh, film camera and um, kind of the 3D technique and also uh, the local stories all together. <laughs> so yeah, that's a really good um, instance for us to look at 
the other even younger group of the Taiwanese artistic filmmakers. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, so our next question is from our audience, um, Thomas Cunliffe. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think you, uh, yeah, I think you know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, one of my groups. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, he's asking if um, commercial Taiwan films do not get distributed do not get distributed too much in mainland China. Um, do filmmakers or producers try to appeal to other export markets in Asia? Um, or can Taiwan films survive by just appealing to Taiwan market? Right, thank you. Okay, thank you, Tom, for your question. And yeah, now I think that that question could relate to my um, one of my points in the, uh, the uh, transnational filmmaking part. Because nowadays we can see there's a trend of the uh, Taiwanese film production or television production groups or um, teams or crew members, they start to uh, working with Netflix and also the HBO Asia. So they don't really uh, want to limit it themselves within Taiwan or maybe China. Yeah, maybe they don't just want to limit themselves. So they uh, use the kind of the global streaming media quite well. They work with them. They are also the founding company and production company. And while these kind of the global streaming platform and do the global distribution, um, Taiwanese film, films and also the te television productions could like export to other uh, countries or even regions like uh, in Malaysia, Singapore, and even, um, I don't know, I, I've heard that some of the Taiwanese television productions can be seen in South America as well. So so now I think uh, Taiwanese films, could, should, we want to survive not only within by the local market, but also by the, the, the global film market, by the, the very good uh, current methods, the global streaming platforms. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, so I'm just, uh, this is just a follow up question. Um, I'm wondering if you know what, um, what is the second largest market um, for Taiwan films after Taiwan itself? Do, do you have any? Okay, I think it's, uh, I think it's Hong Kong, Malaysia and Singapore all together. Oh. And so yeah, some of the cases, uh, China might be a good market, but just limited to a few cases, like you are the apple of my eye and also the our times and maybe love. So very a few, but uh, mostly I think the second um, largest market for Taiwanese film, other than local market, I think it's, Hong Kong, you can see lots of Taiwanese film in Hong Kong. They do have a good performance of uh, box office uh, results and also uh, Singapore and Malaysia. Yeah, and I, I just saw there's a, uh, a comment from one of our Kavan, say in Thailand. Yeah, maybe Thailand can see Taiwan's TV production as well. Yeah. And in Malaysia, the cinema to swap with Bollywood. Okay. Thank you for the, the comments here. Thank you. <laughs> but I think some of the audience in Malaysia are uh, the, the, like, because some of my students they are from Malaysia, they told me that they do watch Taiwanese films and do watch Taiwanese television episodes in Malaysia because they, uh, they, they speak Chinese and they know, know about the the public culture of Taiwan. So I think it happened as well. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, thank you. Um, I'm wondering if Biu or David has anything to add. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> I think uh, if there's any more question, please raise your hand. You probably can uh, make use of this uh, 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 gap. Then otherwise, we will wrap it up. Oh, I think um, actually Max has a question, but because he's, oh, great. he's, he's behind the scene now, so I'll ask on his behalf. Yes, please do. Okay, so um, leading on from your response um, to Tom, um, Garden of 
evening mist, mist seemed to have all the features of an Oscar contender. Um, quality script that fits with language variety, um, quality cinema, cinematography, quality music, and great international film publicity. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, so his question is, is this an indication of Taiwanese post new wave cinema's distinctive character? Yeah. Okay, so I think that's not a distinctive character, but a unique case. But I would like to say more about uh, Ling Shuyu's latest work, Garden of Evening Mist. And you are right, uh, that film has very good uh, universal film language with beautiful cinematography, music, and even lots of different like uh, visual styles and costumes. Um, and even I, I think the actor and actress play very well in that film. And I think that's a really good um, example for, the, for Taiwan cinema now to, to broaden our, uh, I don't know, the, the, the scope of, of filmmaking, like in, in South Korea or uh, other largest um, um, film production countries. So, I think uh, the the garden of the evening mist could be a I don't know a role model or something for uh, contemporary Taiwanese filmmakers to learn and uh, maybe someday we do have a a the, a very good film like a um, like Fong Jun House work latest work uh, the South Korea one who just won the best film of the Oscar okay um, with yeah, you know, very universal like, for language and could trans um, you know, cross the borders of the, the, uh, the different countries or different cultures or something like that. So I think, thank you, Max, you just uh, remind us or uh, remind me that uh, the Garden of the Evening Mist would be a peculiar, but I think with, with a very good potential to let um, different Taiwanese filmmakers to continue on. Um, Thank you, Max. Fantastic. Thank you. Wow, Thank you. Fantastic uh, conclusion. Thank you. On that note, may I ask you to put your hands together, switch on your. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank wow, you so much. A great beginning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, I saw so, so many of uh, the professors I admired, like my. my PhD examiner, <laughs> um, <laughs> Professor Chris Perry. <laughs> I, yes. Yeah, Thanks. And and Lu Xiu Yeah, because I was in Zhengda before, and I I punting. I, I ordered in Lu Xiu. Hi, <laughs> Professor. Chris uh, Perry. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, so yeah. now I'm going to switch off the recording, so you can finally talk. If okay. You <laughs> okay. See you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you.